This is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com, and this is our Game Salad Platformer tutorial. We're now on episode 7, and today we're going to be talking about adding enemies to your game. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the current project file. So if you've been following along, you should be at uh, template or project platform tutorial 006. If not, you can download it from monkeyuncle.com in our template section. So the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and save it as Platform Tutorial 007. Now we're going to create, be creating an enemy. So we're going to create a new actor called Enemy 1. Go ahead and open up that enemy. And we're going to add a graphic to that enemy. And underneath, if you downloaded the platformer graphics from Kenny.nl, uh, you can go back to a previous or look at the uh, tag at the description of the video to find the website. What you want to go down to is enemies, and we're going to be choosing the snail. You're going to see. It's a regular snail. Now instead of dragging it directly over, which we've done with a lot of the others, I want to come down here to Images. We're actually going to drag it over to Images because we're going to animate this enemy. So we're going to take enemy Snail and drag it over. Oh, and of course we get a error message. And that's why we like to save often. So we're going to open it back up. I'm going to open up Platform with Tutorial 7. I'm going to recreate my actor. I'm calling it Enemy 1. I'm going to open it up. I am going to come down here under Images. We're going to drag over Snail. I'm going to just replace the file. And the second one is snail underscore move. So those two together will actually make it look like it's moving along at a snail's pace. So let's go ahead and drag the snail image up into the image area. So that's going to put make that our current image. We're going to change the height and width to 64. So it's about the same size as our player. We're going to come under physics and we're going to change the density the friction and the bounciness to zero and then we're going to change fixed rotation to true and now that we have all that we're going to create a couple of attributes we're going to create two real attributes and one integer attribute go ahead and name the two reels start X and start Y I'm sorry start X and end X and we're going to call the integer just speed you can go ahead and set that to 100 that'll be our speed for this snail since it's a snail let's actually change that to 50 it'll be a really slow snail and now that you have that done we're going to create a couple behaviors and rules. So the first is our gravity, and we're going to use the same method we've been using before. We're going to make it relative to scene. This is the accelerate behavior. We're going to give it a direction of 270, which is straight down, and the acceleration is going to be set to 1,000. We'll go ahead and rename this gravity. And now we're also going to give it a little bit of a starting speed. So we're going to use a change attribute. And we're just going to call this one set speed. And we're going to have it go right first. So we're going to set self, motion, linear velocity, x to self, speed is a variable that we just created and set to 50. 
So that means it's going to be heading right first. Now because we're going to be moving it back and forth much like the elevators, we're going to need to create a couple of rules to handle that. The first one is going to be if attribute self position x is greater than self start I'm sorry index remember because we're with the right most coordinate will be the index so if that's the case then what we're going to do is we're going to use the change attribute and actually let's go ahead and get rid of this second rule because I'm going to show you a little bit since we've you're kind of advanced at this point if you've been following along so we're going to set enemy motion or self motion linear velocity x to we're going to put a negative sign parentheses self motion linear velocity x so what's that's going to do is it's going to multiply whatever the current value is by negative one essentially so that means if we're moving right our speed is going to be in this case 50 if this rule gets activated it's going to set it to negative 50 now if, on the other hand we're heading left and the rule gets activated it's going to basically times negative 50 by negative 1 and whenever you times two negative values you get a positive so it'll basically just change this from positive to negative or negative to positive depending on its current value now to make this rule applicable for when we're going the opposite way we're going to come over here and add another condition and we're going to say when attribute self position x is less than self start x then we want this rule to go over as well now right now this rule will only go off when both of these conditions are met because it says when all conditions are valid in other words this rule would pretty much never go off unless the start x and index were exactly the same value so instead we're going to change this to any so when either of these conditions are met then we're just going to reverse the direction and now because we gave it gravity it's going to fall off the screen unless we give it a collide behavior so much like the player we're going to add collide when actor of tag solids so now let's go ahead and test this little guy out now the only other thing I want you to do is go back to actors here Remember how we created tags? We're going to create one more tag. We're going to call it enemies. And let's drag enemy one into enemies. That way we can tr keep track of all the enemies in the tag. So let's go to scene. Let's open up our scene. And we're going to put our little enemy right about here and let's move him to a start position which we're going to say is about right here okay so let's click on him and expand position and we're going to see the start posi x position which is 395 so that will become start x 395 again this is very similar if not identical to what we did with the elevator the only real difference is that it will have gravity so it will drop to the bottom whereas the other elevators had a fixed X or Y position All right now let's go back and let's move it to its end position which we'll see everybody about right there we're gonna click on it and our end position is 613 so let's change this to 613 Now we're going to save it, especially since we crashed before, and preview.
I'll see our slow little snail. He's moving back and forth very slowly, just like an elevator, only slower. But notice that he continues to face a single direction, which is actually the opposite direction that the player was graphic is facing. The player graphic by default faces right and then we tell it to flip. This one is facing left by default. Now if we want it to flip depending on which way it's going, we can add a rule for that. So if we come back into enemy one, we're going to add a similar rule, although honestly this will be exactly the opposite because remember by default this one faces left. So we're going to say create the rule when attribute self motion linear velocity x is greater than zero then we're going to add that change your attribute back and we're going to say self graphics flip horizontal equals true and make sure it changes back when it's negative we're going to dra drag this down. Remember that's Option or Alt. Click and drag. And we're going to change this bottom one to False. So if it's going right, and that means linear velocity x is greater than zero, then we're going to flip it. Otherwise, we're going to not flip it. Okay. And the only other thing we want to do while we're here is we want to remember I said we wanted to animate it. So let's add the animate behavior. And remember, he's going pretty slow. So we're going to change this speed of animation to two frames per second. And we're going to unclick restore actor image when done. We're going to leave loop checked because we want this to loop. So we're going to drag the two snail behaviors into the animate. We're going to save it and now we have our little snail and as you can see he's changing direction and you see that little animate it's kind of subtle but you can definitely see he's animating it kind of look definitely looks like he's moving now now I'm gonna drop down and I'm gonna ah run right past them ha 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 I can't get me but now Notice how he's like all over the place. Now if you've been following along, you know exactly what happened. That is if we go into scene and scene layers. Of course, enemy one got added to the HUD. So we're just gonna put it down here in the background. Now I was able to run through him because we never told the player what to do when we run into enemy well, any enemy, really. So let's come back into here. This is the player. Now, this rule here. I'm sorry, this rule here is unlabeled and it should be called deadly objects. That was our deadly objects. Remember, we when we touch a deadly object, we pretty much die. So what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate this rule. Okay. We're going to go to the second one. We're going to rename that enemies. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing if you run into an enemy. But since we had a tag, we're going to say when it overlaps or collides with an actor of tag enemies, then we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to basically die. So now I come in here and I hop down and I, oh, I ran into him and that snail killed me. That's a vicious snail. And I died again. Oh, jumped over him. Aha, jumped over him again. Jumped over him again. Notice how our player graphic, when he lands, 
strategy. I jump and I land. I stay. Until I move, I stay in this jump position. We're going to go ahead and fix that now. And we need to go into the player image. And what we're going to do is it, we have this jump or animate. And down here we have if they're moving, we're going to do the animate. But we never set anything in the otherwise. So let's just grab one of the walk behaviors and we'll drag it over. And then what it does is it automatically adds a change image behavior to one of the walk behaviors. So now and jump over them and jump over, land, and then back to walking, jump, land, walk, jump. And I'm back to this behavior. All right. And that'll be it for lesson seven. You now have a moving enemy. You can make multiple enemies. Each one you're going to have to set up with its own X and Y. Uh, start X and Y. So you can have multiple enemies in multiple places and they won't affect each other. And that's one method of creating enemies. Uh, in our next episode, we're going to be looking at a different method, um, similar to this, but slightly different, and it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So I hope you'll stay tuned and see us on our next episode. That's episode eight. And this is John Cressman with monkeyuncle.com. Remember, you can download the templates and see all other tutorials on our website, monkeyuncle.com.